You are welcome to this course, Introduction to Animal Physiology. And in this episode, we're looking at digestive physiology. All this livestock, birds, ruminants, and so on, take in different kinds of things as feed, yet they use they make use of them. How? Because they have different digestive system. Digestion is the breaking down of feed to simple substances metabolizable by the body. While digestive system involves organs involved in chewing and digesting feed. The overall function of the digestive system is to take in feed, break it down to nutrient molecules above this molecules into the bloodstream and then rid the body of any indigestible remains. The digestive system is broken down into two main groups of organs, alimentary canal organs and accessory digestive organs. The alimentary canal consists of organs through which food or feed will pass. It runs from the mouth to the anus, and this includes the mouth, pharynx, oesophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. While the accessory digestive organs contribute to the process of digestion and absorption, but no food or food waste actually passes through them. They include the fifth tongue, salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. To explain the overall function of the digestive system, we have to look at it from the perspective of general principle of digestion and the process involved. There are several basic processes performed by the digestive system, which starts from the mouth. The food or feed is injected or enclosed into the alimentary canal and there the teeth grind it by mechanical digestion. The feed moves into the oesophagus by the glutition, which means swallowing, which is a voluntary process, while peristalsis is involuntary. And peristalsis is the primary means by which food is propelled through the GIT, that is the gastrointestinal tract. It involves waves of alternating contraction and relaxation of smooth muscles in organ walls. From there, the feed of food, now the chyme, experiences chemical digestion in the stomach, which is the Hydrolytic breakdown of food molecules into their chemical building blocks by enzyme secreted in the alimentary canal. Small amount occur in the mouth and stomach, and majority occurs in the small intestine, where absorption of nutrients from the lumen of the GIT takes place and defecation. This is the elimination of indigested substances from the body via the anus in the form of feces. This slide shows the digestive tract of various livestock. The first one is the digestive system of a monogastric mammalian, while the second one shows the digestive system of an asphyxian species. This slide shows the digestive system of a pseudo-ruminant and also the digestive system of the multigastric mammalian. What stimulates the digestive system? The activity of the digestive organ can be stimulated by many factors. One, by the stretch, by the presence of undigested food or feed. By stretch, by a change in luminal pH. And lastly, by the presence of digestion end products, as well as other things. 
Most digestive activity consists of a contraction of smooth muscles in the walls of digestive organs. The secretion of juices into the alimentary canal lumen or the secretion of hormone into the plasma. Much of the control of digestive activity is intrinsic to the digestive organ and mediated by enteric nerve plexus, which are a subsidiary of the autonomous nervous system. A digestive reflex that is mediated by an enteric nerve plexus is a short digestive reflex. A reflex mediated by the brain is a long digestive reflex. Most digestive organs are covered by a serous membrane, which is also called the visceral peritoneum. The abdominal wall is lined by a serous membrane called pereta peritoneum. The peritoneal cavity is the space between the, the visceral and pereta peritoneal membrane and contains a small amount of peritoneal fluid. This arrangement allows the digestive organ to slide somewhat without experiencing undue friction. Most digestive organs are suspended by a mesentery, which is a double layer of serous membrane that anchors organs in place. Mesenteries also provide a connective tissue road through which nerves, blood vessels, and lymph vessels can travel. Organs lying against the abdominal wall have no mesenteries. They lie posterior to the peritoneum and thus are retroperitoneal. They include the duodenum, pancreas, ascending colon, descending colon, and rectum. The organs will have a serous anteriorly and an adventitia posteriorly. Questions. Go over this lecture again and ask yourself questions. Break down the digestive system into two and draw the alimentary canal of different class of livestock. Thank you for listening.